Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back again to another video tutorial from the Apex Predator Billiards Club. My name is Apex Lenio and yes, we are back on the table once more to learn a few more kicking systems. This one is of course one of the kicking systems of all the kicking systems that I've showed you that I did not want to leave out. It's the most prominent two wheel kicking systems that you ought to have in your arsenal. Of course, what we are trying to do here is that we are actually trying to use two reels that is hitting the long reel here, the short reel, and try to estimate um, a hit on an object ball that is close to or very near to this side reel here. This system is so useful to a point where you can actually use this system here to play a three reel kick. And I would almost want to say this is like a part extension or not a part extension, but it's a part of the three reel kicking system as long as on the table to which you're playing, you know what is the exit point that takes you to your corner pocket. But we're not here to talk about the three reel kicking systems, we're here to talk about the two reel. And not only am I going to be showing you the systems and showing you examples of how to actually make contact with the object ball, but I'm actually going to show you a practical example here where this system can be very, very useful. So of course, if this is the first time here on the channel, do not be afraid to smash that subscribe button today and join the family and learn a lot more about pool growth, pool development and pool training. Consider dropping a like. Do not forget to share this out to your pool communities to assist other young players coming up to develop their game in particularly this facet of the game. And of course, do not be afraid to turn on your post notification bell to be notified. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's lesson. And we're going to be looking at the two reel kicking systems, long reel, short reel, and back to the opposite long reel. Let's get right into today's lesson. All right, guys. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the diamond numberings, which you would have been familiar with uh, based on a couple of my other videos. You can check the cards right here for a link to know what the actual diamond numberings are when you're kicking off three wheels that should also help you with what i'm about to explain to you here all right so first of all let's look at the diamond numberings for our object ball this first diamond here is 10 this here is 20 this here is 30 this uh side pocket here is 40 coming here and this is 50 60 70 80 all right now the next thing that you want to know is the diamond numberings for the cue ball so the cue ball actually is at 50 here all right and the reason why this cue ball here is at 50 is because mathematically we start counting this diamond as being 15 and then we begin to increase by five so this is 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 now simply because the table is twice as long as it is wide then we have to double up the diamonds on the short reel to compensate for the distance of the long reel so here is 50 as we go around here this is 60 70 80 and i doubt if you're ever gonna have to play a two reel kick while you're stuck in the corner here but yeah the maximum would have obviously been around 35 here all right now the mathematics is this simply the object ball location will be taken from the cue balls location to get your first real contact so take for example say i wanted to make a legal hit on the two then the two ball would be at diamond 20 that's object ball diamond 20 and let's say that we are snookered by the 10 on the two ball just a simple example here and we wanted to make a legal hit then all we'd have to do is to subtract 20 from 50 and that tells me that my diamond entrance point here is going to be at 30. now all multi-reel systems are played with what is known as running side spin that is two tips to the top and one tip to your left depending on your table if it's slick or if the cloth is old or the humidity or the condition, it varies. So you may have to test 
how your table, if it's playing short or long, adjustments might be required. So here, if I aim here at say diamond 30, and I go two rails, I should be able to make a foolish contact on the two. And I'm just playing it soft here. And I got a nice hit there on the two. I wanted a bit more flusher hit, but that's fine. You just want to make certain that you make a legal contact here. All right. Now take, for example, now say, for example, I am at in between a diamond, let's say in between diamond 60 and 70. So that would be diamond 65. And let's take, for example, I wanted to make a legal hit on the three ball. Now the three ball is located at diamond 30 and I am actually at diamond 65. So should I take 30 from 65, then that would actually they leave me with 35. So I would have to aim about here, see about from here, and then that should actually give me a legal hit on the three ball. Now, one thing that I want to point out to you before we actually go further into the video is a lot of persons, when you're kicking at an object ball, they sometimes come a little bit short or long of the target, simply because the object ball is, the cue ball, pardon me, is coming in at the object ball at an angle like this. So when you're measuring your kick, you have to make certain that you're not measuring the kick adjacent to the rail, meaning from this direction. So if the object ball is here, it is not at, say for example, diamond 30. It's actually a little bit lower than diamond 30. So you have to be very aware and know that the cue ball is coming in, coming in at an angle. So more than likely the three ball would have to be slightly above the diamond for you to legally say that it is at diamond 30. So let's see here at diamond 65. And if we aim at say here, let's see, let's say we take 30 from 65, that is 35. So if we just aim here at 35, we should be able to make a legal contact on the three ball. Two tips up, one tip to the left. That's about 11 o'clock here. And that's a nice full hit there on the three, all right? Now another practical example here would actually be where you may have a ball near to the side pocket, maybe in front of the side pocket or to the edge of the side pocket here, and you are actually snookered again. Let's say, for example, you're snookered on the eight, all right? And you need to make a legal contact on the four and the only option available is a two rail kick on the four. Then this shot is actually a very makeable one. Now, what a lot of, what a lot of uh, kickers do, what a lot of players do is that when you're using calculation, they tend to want to pick the diamond 40. And then what always happens is that the cue ball tends to come to the side rail and chip the four in. If it is that you want to make it full, you've got to choose a diamond that is slightly below 40. So I tend to give this object ball here once it's off the side pocket facing here. I give it a diamond value of say 42 and that's what I always do if I want to make a full hit now if I'm unfortunate to make a full hit I will sometimes clip the short the side wheel here and chip the four into the side so let's see if we can actually make a nice hit so I'm gonna place my cue ball here at diamond 80 and I'm gonna subtracting say 42 here from 80 and that tells me that I need to aim at diamond 38 all right so if I aim towards the back of the side pocket then that would be say 40 so I'd have to aim a bit up here so that's approximately 38 and if I just use two tips of top spin and half tip or depending on the table a full tip of running sides then I should be able to make a legal contact on the four and potentially pocketing the four ball. And that's a nice flush hit. You can see that full hit onto the four on the side. It was just a very good day where you're gonna make a hit like that, but more than likely your objective is to actually try to make a legal hit and avoid giving up ball in hand. Now, two more examples for you here, guys. 
let's say now you have your snooker on the one and you literally just need to make a legal hit here on the one ball now this is a tough kick because now you're coming very close to the corners here and you have potentially where you have the chance of scratching or you might come in a bit short and miss the one so you have to be very careful and this tends to require an extra bit of side spin to avoid the scratch and to make certain that it comes off two rails so again i'm just going to be putting my diamond here my cue ball pardon me in between a diamond so here's 50 here is 60 so i'm putting it at 55 and let us say that i wanted to make a legal hit on the one off two cushions so mathematically if i subtract 10 from 55 i should get 45 and if I aim here at 45 with two tips of top spin, and I'm gonna put a little bit more than just a half tip, I'm gonna put a full tip of running side spin. That's a probably about 10 o'clock there, thereabout. If the cue ball was a clock, then I should be able to make a legal hit on the one ball here. So aiming at 45 from 55 here should give me a hit on the one ball. So here we go. Aiming at 45. Trust the math, guys, it works. Okay. That's a pretty good hit. Wanted a fuller hit on the on the uh, one ball, but as long as you're able to make a contact with your object ball, then you're gonna find that you're always going to be not giving up ball in hand. Alright? So final example here for you guys is now we are, we are actually kicking at an object ball below the side pocket. A lot of the kicking systems tend to tell you how to kick at an object ball that is above the side. But what happens when your uh, object ball is say at the fifth diamond here or say at the sixth diamond here, what happens? So here, remember again that the cue ball is coming in at an angle. So if the object ball is say in front of the diamond here, then you're never going to be able to hit the five ball you have to be say above here all right so you want to make certain that pretty much you're going to be like a half diamond from a judgmental perspective from a pers from a um, eye level perspective you want to make sure that your object ball is like about a half diamond above the intended diamond calculation here all right and again now i'm just going to be putting my cue ball here at 70. i'm going to snooker myself on the five ball here and i got a really bad snooker i only have one option let's pretend and we need to make a legal hit on the five so calculation here if i subtract 50 from 70 then you're going to find that my diamond entrance point here is going to be diamond 20. all right now, once you're going below the side pocket, you tend to want to take off a bit of the side spin. Now you want to use less than a full tip. So maybe a half tip or depending on the table, you may need to use a half tip of reverse side spin to compensate to avoid the side pocket here. So let's see if you can make a first attempt at a legal hit. Aiming at 20 here. I think I want to use just maybe a half tip of running sides. I'm going to try top spin first no english okay and i'm gonna aim a bit higher than 20. okay reverse spin can be a little bit inconsistent so let's just use diamond adjustment here it's maybe a quarter diamond above 20. and that's a nice full contact there on the five excellent kicking by you there all right this system is powerful you cannot miss another two wheel kick once you mathematically calculate and measure your kick all right put some practicing on the table and then you're going to find yourself not even doing the math but it's just going to come naturally to you now i'm going to show you a practical example where this scenario can be very very useful all right guys so here's a practical example it's the end of the rack and your opponent has played a bad shot and he has left himself tough on the eight. He's not feeling so comfortable about actually banking the eight, so he decides to play a very simple safety where he's just going to roll up onto the side of the eight here and leave you like this. 
Now at this point here, you're literally snookered. You only have a jump shot, maybe a two rail, but it's a critical point in the game. It could be hill hill, it could be a momentum change. It could be several things that could be happening in this game. You don't want to miss, you want to win. So what can you do here? A practical example would be, of course, using this two rail system here. Now, speed is going to be crucial for you to pull the shot off. So we're going to be aiming to go one, two rails, but we're going to be playing the kick soft that when we hit into the two, then we're going to just bump the two in front and leave the cue ball behind the two. And this is going to be an absolute stunner. So let's calculate precision here. Here is diamond 20. I don't think, I think maybe diamond 21 would be more of a precise hit. With a soft hit, I should be able to control the cue here. So I'm going to choose diamond 21. And now I am actually at, say, diamond 45. So now if I do the math here, if I take 21, say from 45, that is 20 from 45 is 25. And 1, so that's 24. So here, 1 two, three, four diamond increments, just about a diamond incre increment from the middle of the second diamond and the third diamond here. Speed is crucial. So I'm hoping that I can get this on the first try, guys. But let's see here. Aiming at diamond 24 from diamond 25 should get me to diamond 21. A soft hit here, and I should be able to play a snooker on the eight ball. Let's hopefully we can make a nice hit there and there you can see that's a perfect snooker and after your opponent plays such a tough shot you have returned with such a position and this is absolutely stunning. Let me know what you think about the system in the comment section below. There you can see a fantastic two-way system to add to your game and avoid giving up ball in hand. Do take care until next time. This is Apex Selenia here signing out. Uh, of course, this system, I'll be showing you how you can actually use this system here to play even a more devastating snooker on your opponent when the game is in a complicated position. So, do take care until next time. This is Apex Selenia signing out. Do smash that subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell. And of course, consider dropping a like and share this out to your pool communities. Do take care. I'll see you next time. Peace.